But first we go to the home of Frasier to profile an internet phenomenon, Amazon.com. Seattle, home of Microsoft, the world's largest PC software company, home of Boeing, maker of more than half of the world's civil airliners, and now courtesy of the internet, home to the Earth's biggest bookstore. Hello, Amazon.com, this is Dion, how can I help you? In just four years, Amazon.com has gone from a gleam in the eye of a young Wall Street hotshot to a company shifting $250 million worth of books to a million and a half customers, every one making their purchases over the internet. But when your corporate HQ is over a dry cleaners in a low-rent building, how can you call yourself the Earth's largest bookstore? Well, we're certainly the largest by number of titles that we offer for sale. The wake-up call was seeing web usage grow at 2,300% a year. And the question was, what's the first best product to sell online? I made a list of 20 different products and sort of force ranked them according to several different criteria and ultimately picked books. There are probably three million books in print at any one time, ten times as many as there are music CDs, and even the largest physical bookstore can only stock a fraction of them. But being virtual, Amazon doesn't have to worry about expensive premises on the high street with or without cappuccinos and comfy chairs. Instead, it has a warehouse distinctly on the wrong side of the tracks. It may not look like a bookshop, but it's certainly big. Amazon has over two million books on its website catalogue, your order might not be in the warehouse, but it will be flown in from the publisher, moved, stored, packaged, and air freighted to you on the other side of the world, sometimes in less than 24 hours. And it will still be cheaper than the bookshop on your own high street. The very first uh, version of the Amazon.com business plan I sent out to uh, a couple of dozen prospective investors, and any of the investors who had any experience in the publishing industry or who took the business plan and very prudently sought advice from people in the publishing industry, none of those people invested in the company. Uh, people didn't believe that it was possible to offer such a broad selection. And the systems, the computer systems and the logistics systems to do that have proven to be incredibly complex. But that was the founding basis for the company, and we just, you know, we didn't know better. Amazon.com, this is Lance. We're about eight times the size of our nearest competitor online. That still makes us a relatively small company in the scheme of companies. The big bookseller in the United States is a company that has $2.8 billion in sales. Amazon.com has something like $250 million in sales. So we're still a small company in the scheme of things, uh, but we're a large company for the internet space. Amazon's large share of the new online bookselling market has not gone unchallenged. Large American chain stores like Barnes & Noble and Waterstones and & Dillon's in the UK have turned their attention to the potential of the internet. But with their mindsets locked in the age of the physical bookshop, Bezos is sure that Amazon can use its technology to stay ahead. If you go into any uh, major chain, you'll find that the person who has the, uh, who's the, has the power, the guy who metaphorically sits in the corner office, is the real estate person. Uh, in online retailing, the number one competency that you need is technology. And the systems that we've built are, are very complex and they're getting ever more complex with things like personalization, and collaborative filtering and advanced technologies that help people discover books that blow them away. There are probably 500 books out there in and amongst the uh, millions of books that exist that could have that same effect on you. But finding them is incredibly hard. Barely a day goes by without Amazon's site offering a new way for you to select books, be they similar titles to ones you've already purchased, or consumer reviews, or expert associates who offer their own favourites, all one click away. And this is how Bezos thinks Amazon can compete with the real experience of visiting a bookshop. I'm a fairly outgoing person, but when I'm in a bookshop, I never go up to somebody and say, you know, tap them on the shoulder and say, you know, is that any good? You know, should I be reading this? Uh, Online, people are much more willing to interact with one another. Um, and the physical separation probably reduces the, uh, you know, sort of the intimidation factor and so on. And you can tell very quickly whether you're talking to somebody online who is smart and you know, whether they actually know what they're talking about. And you can get great recommendations and do all sorts of interesting things. And that is, that is fun. And it is community. 
Book selling has always had a rather genteel feel, but Amazon's employees are far away from the cerebral atmosphere of the traditional bookshop. For all their body piercing, grunge style and Walkman while you work, those toiling away in Amazon's warehouse and call centres are the burger flippers and Dilberts of the information age. Okay. But for Jeff Bezos, retailing over the internet is not about their jobs, but about what it does for the rest of us, the customers. Online, the balance of power shifts away from the merchant and toward the consumer, which is a great thing uh, as long as the merchant is aware of it. And if we make a customer unhappy online, they won't tell five friends, they'll tell 5,000 friends. There's just one catch. Amazon.com has never had any earnings. <laughs> Amazon has pointed the way for commerce on the internet. It's one of the 20 most visited websites in the world, is growing at 75% every three months and still losing almost $30 million a year. Amazon will continue to invest in technology until it has enough market share to make a profit. It's a strategy that took Ted Turner and CNN 10 years to make work for television. So if this is internet trading's great white hope, we're in for a long haul.